It's time to find out the truth of the Vibram Five Finger Shoes, also known as those ugly toe shoes that your cousin who lives in a bus and travels around, sleeps in the parking lot, wears and corners you in the family reunion and says stuff like, bro, I can peel an orange with my toes. I don't, I don't even use my hands to pick stuff up anymore. I just grab it with my feet. Bro, my calluses are like half an inch thick. I don't even have to wear these if I don't want to. The human foot was designed to not wear shoes. I work out my feet for 20 minutes a day. Dude, once you try them, you're never gonna go back. So we're gonna try to wade through all the BS to tell the true history of these shoes, find out the truth of why Vibram got sued for $3.75 million, the truth of if these are actually good for you, the truth about what's inside, and the most important truth we're trying to figure out, how does this rank on the WPS scale? So before we even get into this shoe, what is it really? Well, Vibram says they offer a versatile minimalist footwear solution created with individual toe pockets for flexibility to replicate the barefoot experience. These lightweight alternatives to the average athletic footwear allows your feet to engage the strength of natural foot motion. And to the keen observer, you might notice that that description is really skirting around the true benefits of these shoes while not making concrete claims. And that's because they've been sued for the claims that they've made in the past. So it all started in 1999 when and Robert Freely, or Freely, a design student and mountaineer, started developing the precursor to the Vibram Five Finger, and he called it the Tato, Tato. And he said, I wanted to go barefoot in a protected way because when you can really sense the surface under your feet, your body is able to do what it's designed for by nature. And then in 2002, Vibram and Robert paired up and started prototyping the Vibram Five Finger shoe. And in 2004, it officially launched and was presented for the first time, addressing mainly an outdoor audience. But shortly afterwards, several models were designed to guarantee protection in different environments and terrains from running to trekking, from yoga to fitness, from water sports to travel. And in 2006, they were officially released globally, which included the US market. And Vibram USA's CEO, Ted McDonald, suggested them as a minimalist running shoe. And he ran the 2006 Boston Marathon wearing a pair. And then in 2007, the Times Magazine called it one of the best inventions of the year. And after that, the demand for the five fingers really spiked. And so much so that Vibram had a hard time keeping them in supply. The weird thing was, it really hit like the mainstream mainstream because people started wearing them on like the red carpet, celebrities started wearing them, people on Survivor started wearing them. From 2009 to 2011, according to Google Trends, that's when the five finger really spiked. It really capped out in 2009 to 2011. And to put that in perspective, in 2012, the barefoot style of running shoe made up 15% of all running shoe sales. And also in 2012, that's when the big lawsuit hit. And this lawsuit was levied against Vibram for the false claims that they made about the five finger health benefits and the lawsuit lasted for a couple years and finally in 2014 Vibram settled and ended up paying 3.75 million dollars and keep in mind it's a it, they settled so they weren't proven wrong in the court they weren't proven right in the court they just settled and paid back 3.75 million dollars and from there I honestly just thought that they discontinued him because of the lawsuit and I just didn't see him around as much but apparently over the last 10 years people have kept buying them and kept wearing them so Vibram has kept making them and in recent years there's been a new resurgence in this whole barefoot world Worlds, especially starting in 2020. And now to this point in 2023, over 35% of trail running shoes belong in that minimalist category. And you can also see from Google Trends, once again, how much more it's come up into the zeitgeist of the footwear world. And Vibram has tons of different styles. They have styles for running, hiking, lifting, water sports, even casual versions. Why would you make a casual version? Don't try to dress it up. It's a five finger shoe. Basketball season is at the halfway point, And since football season is over, there's no shortage of action on the hardwood. And I'm teaming up with DraftKings to give all new customers a winning offer. All new customers have to do is sign up for the DraftKings using my promo code ROSEANVIL, put at least $5 on a pregame money line for any basketball game, and you receive an additional $150 in bonus bets if your bet wins. So it's a pretty cool way of uh, just betting $5 and then the DraftKings basically gives you $150 of bonus bets to, to play with. It's just a $5 way to play with uh, betting money online, making those games more exciting, get you engaged a little bit more, play with some friends. It's, it just adds a lot of excitement to sports. And if you're wondering what to do with that $150 in bonus bets, you can try the same game parlays where you combine multiple bets from one game, like which player will score first and which team will be winning at halftime for even bigger winnings. And if mobile sports betting is not available in your state, don't worry, you can still get in on the action and fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy. So download DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use promo code ROSANVILLE. Bet that $5 on a pregame money line for any basketball game and get that $150 dollars in bonus bets if your bet wins. That's promo code Roseanville only at DraftKings Sportsbook. So check out the links in the description. And thanks again to DraftKings for sponsoring this video.
So what were those claims that Viram actually got in trouble for? Well, there was five big benefits that they claimed. The first one was the ability to strengthen muscles in the lower legs and feet. The second was improve range of motion in toes, feet, and ankles. The third was stimulate the neural function that is important to maintaining agility and balance. The fourth was eliminating the heel lift to improve posture through proper alignment with spine. And the fifth and final one was it allowed the body and feet to move naturally, which just feels good. None of that was backed up by any real data or substantiated by any tests or studies done. And so when there's product that is hurting someone and there's room for a lawsuit, there's gonna be a lawsuit because that's America, baby. But I honestly think a lot of the blame for the injuries were caused by not Vibram, but the people who became nearly evangelists for the five finger philosophy. Because a lot of people who bought these were uninformed or misinformed because of the hype around them. People were writing books about them. People were having Facebook pages. People like really built their identity around these shoes. And I lived in Logan, Utah during the really popular craze of these, all the granola dudes wore these all day, every day. And they're always talking about how connected they felt to the earth and how strong their feet were and how tough they were and the calluses on the bottom of the feet. And I was like, I couldn't pay attention to what they're saying because I could smell their feet from six feet away. And I think it was that enthusiasm and that nearly religious belief in them that really ended up hurting people more than it was Vibram's claims. But Vibram is responsible because they are the company that put those claims out that then got taken and blown out of proportion. So what data do we actually have to look at for these shoes? Well, in 2013, a study of barefoot running shoes in Provo, Utah, home of BYU, which might have the most five finger shoes per capita in the entire world, if you know anything about BYU, bunch of goobers down there. They found that runners who wore Vibram shoes were at greater risk for injury because the group that wore the Vibram five fingers had a significantly greater incidence of bone marrow edema after a 10 week training period. And they also didn't show any soft tissue changes for better or for worse. So that was, that was kind of an interesting thing to me because there's so many claims about the strength and the muscles and the, after the 10 weeks, there was no change whatsoever. So the real takeaway from that study for me is that you have to be really conscious and careful when you start wearing these barefoot shoes because if you go just straight into full barefoot everything, you can risk even damaging your bones. And that made me wonder, well, where's all the long-term studies that would definitively tell us the truth of, are these good for you? Are they bad for you? Is it all just hype? Is it all just like pseudoscience? Well, the problem is these shoes have only been popular for the last 20 years, and it's not long enough to even have a long-term study, let alone have the incentive to run a long-term study. So there really isn't any real world proof one way or the other. And that's what really shocked me about preparing for this video. With all these claims, there's not a whole lot of studies out there substantiating anything. And since then, Vibram has softened the claims like we talked about previously by not actually claiming anything. But the, the thing that drives me nuts is they don't offer much info on how to transition and the dangers of using the product the wrong way that they created. And to be fair, they do have a full page on it that's very comprehensive. It goes through everything, lots of resources, but they don't have it on the actual product page. They don't have like a warning or like, hey, make sure you like, check this out before you buy these and start wearing these. It's just like buried on their website. So if you do get a pair of these, just be really careful and look through that thing. But you're not here just for the history lesson. You're here to see us tear things apart, burn them and stuff like that. So the first thing we wanna do is burn them because this shoe looks like it has leather on it. And on Vibram's website, once again, they're very ambiguous as to what the materials are. And it's a very convincing fake leather if it is. So we broke the lighter out and put it to the flame. And as you can see, it just completely melted. So it's clearly a synthetic material because leather doesn't melt like that. And then we also just for fun burnt the nylon upper and that stuff just melts immediately. This is far from a, a, a flame resistant shoe, which no one's using it around flames, I would assume. I guess there's like hiking versions, but you wanna stay away from flames. And now that we know that a lot of these materials are synthetic and maybe not as strong as they look, I wanted to do the puncture test to see if you're actually wearing these around and you're, you're walking around. What happens if you step on a thumbtack or a nail? Is it just gonna go straight into your foot? Well, we put it in the puncture tester and it took 67.5 pounds to puncture through, which is pretty impressive. It's, it's right up there with regular sneakers for how thin this outsole is, it performed pretty well. Another part of this is I wanted to know how did this respond to the bar drop test? Because I think a lot of the injuries people got from this is that there's zero squish, there's zero support. And so we dropped the bar on this and it surprisingly bounced up 5.5 inches. Cause if you compare it to like other shoes that we've done, you know, even these, these uh, vapor flies, whatever they're called, bounced up seven inches. So you'd think this much foam would cause a lot more rebound than 
almost no foam. But I think what it is, is what we put the shoe on is steel. And so when steel hits steel, only even if it's only through like a few millimeters of rubber, it's gonna have a lot of rebound compared to if there's a, a foot in the shoe. So I think we're gonna have to revamp that a little bit and have the shoe on something that, that resembles the structure and consistency of a foot to give more accurate readings because I don't feel like that was an accurate reading. So from these tests, we know that at least from the protection of stuff on the ground, they're gonna protect your feet and they might give you a little bit of squish underfoot. So let's cut them in half and see if we can figure out what about the design of this shoe hurt so many people's feet. All right, we got them chopped in half. Probably the easiest shoe we've ever cut, but let's see what's inside. So this is easily the thinnest sole construction out of any shoe we've ever reviewed, even in the barefoot world. If you look at this compared to all the other barefoot boots, the hiking boots, the sneakers, the athletic shoes that we have coming up on the channel, they're by far the thinnest. There's only six millimeters uncompressed separating you from the ground. That's four millimeters of rubber outsole and then two millimeters of foam and fabric and lasting board. But that's before you stand on it. Once it's compressed, you're really standing on like four and a half millimeters of outsole material. But I do like how the insole and the construction style goes all the way to the end of the toes. So you still, you still have a little bit of padding underneath your toes. But now you can see this is clearly what erect people's feet. There's just nothing underneath your foot. So if you're used to walking around in this all day and you're used to jogging in this all day and all that squish and all that um, lack of support or support, and then you go to this, that's how you end up over straining your calves and your tendons and your, your the, the tendons in your feet. Because if you think about standing in these shoes, the weight of your body is mostly gonna be distributed across the heel and the ball of your foot. And then the uncompressed foam is gonna cradle your arch, giving you that arch support that uh, people like with these running shoes. Versus this shoe, you have nothing supporting you anywhere. So all that weight of your body is no longer being distributed. It's no longer being cradled. It's no longer, no longer being helped by foam. All that pressure and all that weight is being straight on your skin, on your bones, on your tendons, and on your muscles. So that's why when people just switch to this style of footwear overnight, it completely destroyed their feet. It would be like switching out your like truck's suspension to like two by fours and then trying to take it up the canyon. The lack of dampening would just completely rattle your truck apart and start fracturing the frame and stuff would start falling off because there's no squish to it at all. Same theory with these two styles of shoes. So now that we've gone over everything, are the five finger shoes good for you or are they bad for you? Well, it's kind of both because there's no evidence clearly pointing one way or the other. It all depends on if you transition correctly, if you're using them correctly, what you're using them for, and what you're trying to achieve by wearing these shoes. But so far in this Barefoot February slash Arch March series we're doing, a lot of evidence really points to positive benefits from the wider toe box, the zero drop, a lot of the evidence is pointing towards that rather than the high heels and the arch support. Final answer, it, it really is both. You can hurt your feet or you can help your feet with this. To me, the biggest surprise takeaway from this is Vibram's sneaky way of doing things. You know, I, cause I love Vibram. I have a Vibram hat. I love Vibram outsoles, like big Vibram fan, but I just wish that Vibram would make it way more clear the, the positive and negative repercussions of wearing this style of, of shoes, especially after a lawsuit. You think they would make it super clear to the consumer that's buying their product, that their product could actually hurt them. But instead they play that really careful game with the way they position the product and the uh, particular words they choose to alleviate any responsibility for what happens to your feet in these shoes. When the, all they have to do is make the home page a clear, hey, careful, you gotta do this the right way. You're gonna hurt your feet if you just transition to these immediately. But that being said, there is a lot of value to strengthen your feet. And especially if you have pro problems with plantar fasciitis or your feet are weak or all shaped funny from being jammed into dress 
shoes all day, but you have to be willing to completely swallow your pride and actually wear these shoes. And all jokes aside, I, I do respect people that wear these shoes because they just have zero concerns about what, uh, what they look like or what people might think of them. And that's what brings us to the most important part of this video, the WPS scale. So if I were to rank these shoes on the WPS scale from clown to duck to dub double wide surprise to cool, well, they're not cool. They're not a double wide surprise because you're not surprising anybody by wearing these. Like they're going to be able to see them from a, a thousand yards away. So they're either a duck or a clown. And they're not really bulbous like a clown shoe, but I would feel like a clown wearing these. So I'm going to say right in between duck and clown. Mostly clown though. But, but don't let my personal insecurities deter you. They are really unique and they have a really unique feeling that I think everyone that's into footwear should at least try them on and, and wear them around a little bit once in their life just so they can experience it because it is a really unique feeling shoe. But if you're not really ready to commit to the full ugliest barefoot shoe and that's ever been made. We have a video on the top five barefoot boots, top five barefoot shoes. We have a minimalist tactical boot video. We have a barefoot athletic shoes coming out. And if you're in need of some toe spreading and you don't want to deal with the five finger shoes, Limbs has their boulder boots that I'm a big fan of that we've made videos on that you can actually wear toe spacers inside of the shoe. And so you get that same feel, that, that, that separating your toes feel without having to wear these. You can actually look half decent because I'm actually wearing them today. Much better looking. So I'll put all the links to those videos in the description and uh, let me know what you guys think. Let me know your experiences in these. What is the biggest problem for you f with these shoes? Did you hurt your feet? Do they strengthen your feet? Give me your opinion on these because I, the, the comment section is a great resource for videos like this where there's not a lot of like real world data on it. At least we can get some, uh, not necessarily objective information, but subjective information from you guys. So thank you guys so much. And thank you for supporting these videos and everything you do. It means a lot to me. So thank you. See ya.